going on, y'all? It's Icon once again about to review the NXT TakeOver Toronto show. Um, five matches as always. Um, pretty much standard NXT stuff. Looking forward to it. Not really looking forward to the championship match. Everything else looking forward to. Two women's matches. Street Profits tag team match. Belting Dream. Uh, North American champion. Let's get right into it. Let's start off with the first match. So the first matchup was the tag team championship match between the Street Profits and the Undisputed Era. And I have to say I was a little bit nervous because Street Profits just won the championship at the last takeover. They only really had one tag team match, well, title defense against like Oni Larkin and, and Birch. And they're on Raw now, like they're making appearances on Raw, so it's like they kind of got the call up, but not really got the call up. So I was afraid that... You know, because they got the quote-unquote call-up, I thought that they would pull them from from NXT. So going into this match, I was like, well, they're going to lose the championships tonight, and then they'll just make a fresh debut, which sucks because they never had a chance to um, defend the championships at a proper takeover. Uh, but it turns out that I was wrong. <laughs> In a hard-nosed, knockdown, athletic, technical, wrestling, tag team, awesome match. And, I mean, they did everything from back and forths to flips to double team moves. You know, coming off the top rope, like, they did a blockbuster. They did um, a, a headlock, you know, a guillotine headlock into a blockbuster. But uh, with the with the double spear, <laughs> I mean, Montez Ford was all over the place. You know, that boy, um, like, like Renarlo said, he has um, springs in his kneecaps. And after, um, a, after two spears by... Angelo Dawkins did this thing at one point where he got the hot tag and I think um Bobby Fish was in the corner O'Reilly was running towards Dawkins Dawkins picked up <laughs> Fish and threw well he picked up O'Reilly and threw him in the fish and I was just like well I've never seen that off a hot tag before which is pretty cool but yeah but um double spear by Angelo Dawkins Frog splash off the top rope by Montez Ford. Basically jumped um, full four quarters of the court. And the Street Profits defend in their first takeover title defense. Defend the NXT Tag Team Championships. And I am extremely happy for it. So, I mean, now they can lose it. If they lose it, if they lose it to, um, if they lose it this Wednesday, and then they go ahead to, you know, Raw and SmackDown officially, I'll be fine with that. But congrats to the Street Profits, and I look forward to seeing where they go next. So the next match after that was Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae. The, these two women have had beef, um, legitimate beef, for a long time. And because of that, which makes perfect sense, as soon as the match started, Candice LeRae went after that ass, and the two women started throwing haymakers and fighting. Um, Io Shirai suplexed Candice LeRae on top of the announce table. Uh, they hit hard, they fought hard, uh, there was a lot of emotion, a lot of aggression going into it, you know, a lot of kickouts as well, and, you know, I, I could definitely, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the huge, I'm not a huge Candice LeRae fan, like, I'm not, you know, usually, like, I hate all of her matches, but, um, she actually, she impressed me in this one, I was very, I was very impressed in this one, she put on a damn good show, the crowd was into it, they got a This Is Awesome chant, you know, she pulled out all the stops, one thing I didn't like, I didn't like how they kept constantly referencing um, Johnny Gargano. They're like, oh, Candace showing the heart like her husband. I'm like, we know, first of all, we know they're married. And let the girl stand on her own without mentioning her husband like every 13 seconds. Uh, Io Shirai, who wears pants now because she's evil. Um, she was doing this thing where like every time she did a move, she would always taunt Candace LeRae. She would throw it in her face and like show off. So I kind of like like snooty bitchy, you know, like I'm better than you, Io Shirai. You know... Uh, one of the main things that actually surprised me towards the end of the match, um, Io Shirai did hit her, did hit her world famous moonsault, and Candice LeRae actually kicked out, and that made perfect sense as well because Candice is pissed. She's fired up. She's running off adrenaline. So you know, it's no mistake. It's like it's not a surprise that she would kick out of that. You know, like I thought that was completely believable. You know, for the first time in my life, I actually enjoyed a Candice LeRae match. <laughs> um, but um, at the end, after. After the finisher failed, uh, Io Shirai put Candice LeRae in a head scissor, you know, basically tried to choke her out, and Candice didn't tap out. To her credit, she did not tap out. Instead, she passed out. The referee had no choice but to call the match. Io wins by pass out, and I believe this feud will continue. This feud will definitely continue. There will be more of these two ladies going forward, and after what I saw tonight, I'm actually looking forward to it. 
So then we got interrupted. Uh, Matt Riddle came out talking that shit <laughs> because he still got beef with Killian Dane. He called him out. Killian Dane came out. The two of them basically brawled for about ten minutes or less. Um, Matt Riddle semi. Matt Riddle semi got that ass beat, and you know they fought on the stage. Security came. And security got beat up, and it ended with uh, Killian Dane with with Matt Riddle on top of Killian Dane trying to choke him out. And then Killian Dane ran off the stage. Did a, did like a suicide. Did, did basically like a dive off the stage. He took a security guard with him. <coughs> And sent um, himself, Matt Riddle, and, this, and the poor security guard uh, through two tables, actually. So uh, look for these two, because I think the next take, takeover isn't until Survivor Series. And they're not going to drag this out that long. So look for these two to settle their differences probably this, uh, not, well, not this Wednesday, because the Wednesday after takeover is always uh, pre-show matches. So two weeks from now, <laughs> look for the Killian Day matt Riddle saga to officially come to an end. Triple Threat action followed. Roderick Strong, uh, Pete Dunne, and the Velveteen Dream. Dream came out. Oh, he didn't come out yet, but... <laughs> uh, the Mounties music played. You know, we got the old school, I'm the Mountie. Uh, some dancers came out dressed like the Mountie. Uh, Mounties, I should say. They did a little dance, um, a little hip-hop dance. Had some fine, pretty ladies. Uh, in, in, in the mix, and then the Velveteen Dream came out with Canadian um, inspired wrestling gear, which I thought was really cool. Velveteen Dream always puts on great entrances for um, NXT TakeOver. Uh, got the, he has the red and white on, he gets in the ring, uh, Strong gets in the ring, Dunn gets in the ring. A uh, hard hitting match throughout the entire thing um, between all three competitors. There was even a moment, you know how Pete Dunn is like, you know, he was able to do his finger breaking. Uh, Roderick Strong was able to. You know, get his backbreakers, you know, and all his uh, all his hard moves. And Velveteen Dream actually not being the um, not being because you know they're like like it's kind of like tweener action. Like I, I mean, I guess Pete Dunne is a face, but you know he kind of acts like like a bat. Like when he does regular and when he does non UK stuff, Pete Dunne is more like a tweener. Velveteen Dream is really you know he's a tweener. Whether he's face or heel depends on who he's fighting. Uh, Roger Strong was the only clear-cut heel out of the whole out of the whole situation. You know, there was a moment during the match where Roderick Strong did double um, those running forearms that he does. Because both um, Dream and Pete Dunne were laid up against the ropes, and he did two running forearms back and forth on him. Uh, Pete Dunne was able to do a double finger breaker. You know, where he grabs the finger of both competitors and then snaps both of their fingers. Uh, Velveteen attempted a double Dream Valley driver, but it didn't work. Um, but kudos to him for trying. Uh, the crowd loved it. I mean, I loved it. The match ended where Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong... Like, well, Pete Dunne and Velveteen Dream were going at it. Velveteen hit the Dream Valley driver. Pete Dunne threw Velveteen Dream out the ring. And, and then um, Roderick Strong got Pete Dunne up to do his suplex into the backbreaker. And when he pulled off his finisher, so now he's taken the Roderick Strong finisher, and he's also taken a Dream Valley driver. Roderick Strong goes for the pin, and as Strong goes for the pin, Velveteen comes off the top rope with the Dream, with, um, not, not, the, not the Dream Valley driver. He <laughs> Velveteen Dream comes off the top rope with the Purple Rainmaker onto Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong rolls over. Velveteen Dream gets the pin over Pete Dunne, and the Velveteen Dream is still your North American champion. I um, mean, it was real cool that he was able to pin Pete Dunne, of all people. And the fact that he did not pin Roderick Strong means that Strong and Velveteen will continue their feud going forward. So after that was the women's championship match, Medium versus Shayna Baszler. And I have to say, like, tonight, you know, I know I've said at least three times now that it was hard-hitting action and... That's because, like, we didn't get the usual, like, no one came out tonight and put on a rousing technical wrestling, you know, <laughs> co you know, like, match for the fans. Like, people were getting their ass whooped tonight. Like, like they could have had this whole pay-per-view out on the street. <laughs> that's, like, that, that's how it was. But, um, you know, especially, like, like, Shayna Baszler fighting Mia Yim was basically like fighting Shayna Baszler because the kicks, the punches, the slaps, the torquing, the you know, the hand contorquing, the there was one time where um Mia Yim did a sunset flip a sunset flip bomb thingy 
off the top rope to Shayna Baszler, and she did one thing that I thought was um was pretty interesting. Uh, during the match, Mia Yim, she did Shayna Baszler's whole elbow stomp thing that Shayna does to other people. And when she stomped on her elbow, two or three times, Shayna Baszler tried to go for the um, for the choke, the choke out, the Kuda Fina what, clutch thingy, the, um, basically for the choke. But because of the arm damage that was done throughout the entire match, she wasn't able to lock the choke in all the way, and Mia Yim kept breaking the choke because she was able to work on the damaged arm. And then it just got to a point where Shayna Baszler was just like, screw it, <laughs> since um, she couldn't lock the choke in. She did the, actually, she won her match the way Io Shirai won hers. She put, um, she put Mia Yim in a triangle choke around the head and just used her legs to squeeze the life out of her and choke her out, and Mia Yim tapped out. Uh, I know a lot of people were upset about that, but, you know... I'm more, like, I like Mia Yim. Like, I love Mia Yim. I'm a, I'm a Mia Yim fan. But, you know, I've been a fan since she was with, you know, Marty Bell when she was Jade and TNA. But, you know, Bianca Belair should be the one to take the title off of Shayna. And I thought Bianca Belair should have won in NXT TakeOver Phoenix, and she didn't. So, I'm not upset that Mia Yim lost because I want to see, I want to see Bianca make a comeback now and climb back to the top to go after the women's championship. Or maybe they'll do a triple threat with Mia Yim, Bianca versus Shayna Baszler. It'll be an elimination match. They'll eliminate Shayna first, and then both Mia Yim and Bianca can go at it one-on-one. Because the two of them have a feud going. They now each have an individual gripe with Shayna Baszler. And I would like to see a good women's feud between three awesome competitors. So I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully they, they insert Bianca back in the mix, and we'll see who comes out on top. So the final match was the uh, NXT Heavyweight Championship match between Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole. Uh, the third match for the two of them. And uh, I gotta be honest, like, going into it, I wasn't... That was the, This was, like, the, the least match I was looking forward to because, you know, I've seen them fight numerous times. So I was just kind of, like, over it at this point. But, my God, did the two of them beat the shit out of each other. Like, they had the two out of three falls stipulation where the first fall was a regular match that went on for a long time. Uh, Johnny kicked Johnny kicked Adam Cole in the nuts. Ba <laughs> he kicked <laughs> he kicked Adam Cole in the Bay Bays to um, get the first pin. And then he wore him out with a steel chair, which got um, Adam Cole the second fall. And then they brought down the steel cage, which had... And, 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 and they, they made the announcement. The, the girl, the pretty girl who does the announcing for NXT, she made the announcement that you couldn't escape the cage to win the final match. So, but there were, um, there was barbed wire all the way around the, um, the cave, the steel cage, so you couldn't climb out. There were bats and kendo sticks and sledgehammers. And they used everything, I think they even brought out the kitchen sink at one point. <laughs> and it, it was very brutal, it was very, very 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 brutal um both guys have lacerations like knee you know like knee contusions i wouldn't be surprised if one of them has a slight concussion and you know towards the end like johnny had set up this weird contraption it was like two tables a ladder and then like something on top of the ladder and towards the end of the match um both of them obviously they set it up for a reason so both of them ended up on top of that structure you know, towards the end of the match. See, and this is the part that lost me because they kicked out of everything. They kicked out of chair shots. They kicked out of Panama, Panama Sunrises. They kicked out of Gargano locks with um, with kendo sticks. You know, Johnny even cut some actual wire off the barbed wire at one point to use that as a weapon. Chair shots and table shots. and They do all this stuff. They do all this punishment, all this pain, and they kick out of everything. And because both of them fell off the top of the cage and crashed into one table, because there were two tables set up, they actually missed the second table. They crash into one table. Adam Cole just drapes his arm over Johnny, and Adam Cole gets the victory. And I'm just like, out of everything y'all went through, that that took you out. You know, like you kicked out of the stuff that the stuff that Johnny kicked out of throughout this entire match was way worse than falling into the table from that distance. So. The ending kind of, like, the, I mean, the match was cool to watch because it was brutal as all hell, but the ending of it just kind of fell short for me. But, you know, I digress. It was, actually, it was still a good show. I mean, this was the, the championship match was actually the match that I enjoyed the least. Um, my favorite match, it would have to be between the 
the Street Profits and the North American Championship. I'd have to pick one of those because both of those were um, maybe the tag match. I would probably say like the best. My, my favorite match was the tag match out of the whole show. Uh, but I give the show, I give the show like a solid like eight and a half. You know, it would have got higher, but like I said, I was I just wasn't personally like invested into the championship match. But Adam Cole is still your NXT. No belts changed hands tonight. Um, Adam Cole is still your NXT. Uh, world heavyweight champion and we'll see if Johnny gets moved over to the main roster now or if he'll just give it one more shot god I hope not let's get a new challenger in there let's have Johnny do something else and yeah maybe Tommaso Ciampa when Tommaso Ciampa comes back I'll be looking forward to that to see where they go all right so that was it you know that was the NXT show and you know like I said uh, it was another good one I definitely enjoyed it I mean sometimes people like to Overhyped the NXT shows, but this one was actually very good. Like I said, it was very hard hitting, you know, very brutal, <laughs> very interesting. I enjoyed it a lot. Like I said, outside of the heavyweight match. So tomorrow's the longest party of the summer. I'm going to do a reaction for SummerSlam as well. Hopefully, I can do the whole thing in one night. If not, then I'll post it Monday because this thing's going to be like 20 hours long and I got to go to work on Monday. So, thanks everybody for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the show. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And until next time, I'm out this bitch. Yeah.